All right, you may think I've already spent too much time explaining all this stuff, but um, the difference between this video and those five minute videos are, those people really don't understand the mechanics of what they're doing, I don't think. And I think the difference in this is I'm gonna have you understand by the time you're done watching this lengthy video, I might make this rail welding thing a uh, three part, 10 minute video each, I don't know. Here's the AK Builder tool. The plus the AK Builder tool is right here this tapered in in the front. The bottom of this plate matches perfectly with the, with the two sides of the training here that your rails are going to match up to. Okay, So you know on each side your rails are going to match that training perfectly. That's the advantage of the AK Builder tool. The disadvantage is it only locks it in right here. And then you see people take um, the little C clamps and just oh, oh and, and, and tightening back here and stuff like it's all good. I can look at this with my bare eyes and I could already tell you this distance between here and here is smaller than the distance between here and here. These things are flexing out. They're not they're not square and level. They may be true up here, but they're not up here. So I think it's best when you do these rails with the AK Builder tool. And I think the AK Builder tool is a help to get old school again. And go ahead and throw that drill in there and do that other method I showed you. Because now I can guarantee you that the gap up here is somewhere close to this drill bit. And if you get this tight right here and mount it up and then you know you're pretty much perfectly straight the whole way across. See, if you got this weird angled rail, but then you're all smooth up here, you know, you meet up here because this thing's got you even up here on both sides, but then the rest of your rails, you got this side kicked up, this side kicked down because there's no support back here. That ain't right. You know, you can take your caliper and measure and make sure you get perfectly right, you know, and that would be better to go ahead and uh, get some like needle nose vice grips and make sure you clamp it down at the exact spot. But I'm willing to bet this drill bit's good enough. As long as your, your rails are pretty much close to perfectly level, you should have a lot more smoother action, a lot less bending, twisting, weird shit going on when you're trying to shoot, little weird movements that are just totally throwing everything off. These things being dead straight is uh, probably a very big help. And also, the advantage of this tool is having them meet perfectly with that trinion. I think it's a big thing. And to me, it seems like the rails should meet the trinion. They shouldn't be a space. They should meet the trinion so the bolt is able to slide right across, you know, and not hit a little bump in the road or anything, you know. Why, why should it be banging around, bumping on that little gap and just wearing metal away, you know, over time? So what if there's some flex and it makes these rails kind of... I, I don't know what the idea is between the, the space, man. If somebody knows, please explain. I'd like to know, you know, I'm not saying it's wrong, I just simply don't understand it, so. Okay, so now what you're going to do is take your calipers, you zero these guys out, and what you would do is measure down from here to the rail, right? That says 7.68, so I'll write that down if I had a pen. Here's one. 7.68, that's millimeters I assume, yes. Okay, and now I have a rail right here. It's probably somewhere around 10 millimeters, 11 millimeters I think wide. And we're gonna measure that. Uh, around 10, that's seven. I don't think I'm right. I don't think I'm pinching it right because I'm looking through the camera and not with my eye. Yeah, it's around 10, I guess. 9.88, it says. So we're going to divide that in half, you know, and basically get five. Five millimeters will be the middle of these rails, and that's kind of where we want to hit. So now you're going to take that 7.68 and add five. Let's see here. So go back up. Zero. Oh, 
uh, we'll just call it seven, and then we'll add five. So this is all just really rough, just to give you an idea. So I'm trying to film and do all this stuff. See, now we're going to be hitting around the middle of these rails. And if you look, I already got these things marked. Well, I'm kind of way ahead of this, but I realized I didn't have the sound on the camera. So there we go. See what I'm saying? Now when you plug weld, it's hard to do this straight and film it. Sitting in a chair too. Okay, see? Now that should be about the center of the rail, okay? Um, typically I do three welds on the side that would have a full auto sear in the rail if it were a full auto, but we're not building a full auto. <laughs> this is going to be a sporting rifle, semi-automatic. So I chose to do an eighth inch hole right here where I'm going to do a plug weld and that's right up towards the front of the rail. That's also above my little mag rail area and it's above the mag dimple. Right here looks like kind of a weak spot inside of the rail. That's where uh, it's kind of notched up and then it comes down right here. Some people spot weld down here, I don't, you know, and some people plug weld down there. Well, I'm plug welding, but I don't need to do it down there because these welds up here are going to be majorly strong. Right here is the end of the rail, and I decided, well, maybe that's a little too close to the end. I'll bring it forward just a little bit because the plug weld is going to cover kind of a, a surface area like that. I flipped over to the other side, did the same measuring. I decided the front of the trinian, above the, the mag dimple and stuff, probably be a good area. This right here is the ejector claw, and it takes a lot of abuse, so I put one right under that claw. Then about the end of the rail, <clears throat> just a little bit in front, like I did the other side, and then I decided, you know, between this mag, or this, this ejector claw and the end of this rail, I'll go ahead and do four on this side. Now I'm going to drop these rails out and drill the plug. Uh, drill all the holes that I marked. And I'm going to use an eighth inch bit because eighth inch bit, as soon as I start uh, plug welding, at first the metal is going to kind of like burn away and around from the holes. And I'm just going to keep it right there and I'm just going to kind of just build a puddle. You know, I'm not really running a bead or chasing nothing around or going in circles trying to fill it up. I'm just going to hold it right there in that little hole and just let it kind of melt out come back and fuse everything together and make its penetration itself. A MIG will do all the work and especially when you're doing little plug welds like this. You know a lot of people start messing them up when they start trying to go around and fill in the hole or whatever. Just hold it there. Let it fill itself up, do the thing. Um, but with this thin metal you want to make sure that you have your wire speed turned down and maybe your heat turned down a little bit. You know you gotta figure out your own settings. I'm not even gonna try and sit here and tell you how I set my MIG up in my machine because we're probably going to be using different machines and they're all a little bit different and I have my fill for what I'm doing you need to find your fill but definitely turning your wire speed down when you're, you're welding on this thin stuff will help you so I'm going to drill these holes out and I'll set it up right above my weld when I start getting ready to weld here in a minute I just want to go over drilling real quick um, there's people out there that kind of don't understand you know, basic things yet, so I'm trying to make it for everyone. This is kind of a slick metal surface, um, so the bit may not catch on anything at first. So when you first start drilling, you want to go at a slower speed. If you just get on there and start pushing, the bit's going to walk over on you and then catch, and then you're going to have a, a hole somewhere you didn't want it, you know, if you don't pay attention. So you just kind of start in the middle of your mark, start slow. Let it kind of start boring its own little hole. See, I just checked to make sure it didn't walk a little bit on me. Then once I have something uh, similar to like um, just a little round cut, like if I were to take a uh, punch, 
and make a peen, which I don't want to do because I'll kind of bend the receiver, right? But if I walk the bit slow, it'll just kind of um, carve out a little peen like, like I had done that. And then you can go ahead and speed it up and drill. I'm just going to show that one. <coughs> just, I don't know, maybe there's someone out there that didn't know that. And I just say the receiver, I don't know. Okay, so I'm going to try this for the first time. The AK Builder Jig and the drill for the rear. Never done it before, you know. And I'm not afraid to try something new and look like a fool when I fell. Also, I pointed this out. Um, I don't know if the camera, there you go. The hole's a little high and um, there's some of the top of the rails actually showing. So, to make sure that I don't, you know, burn all, everything all crazy, if this happens to you, I'm going to start the MIG where the wire is actually kind of pointing down towards the good, good area, and then I'm going to build it up around and high and kind of cover all this up without digging deep where there's no metal underneath it. If you start digging where there's no metal underneath, I'll burn all this out up here. Um, but I'm going to do this side first that I have clamped, then I'm going to take the spit off, do this other side, clamp it. So I'll set the camera up where you can watch a couple welds, and I'm just going to weld now.